all right good afternoon everybody so let's start with the first, the topic of the day is introduction to our business right now as you guys are very very new people in in this industry right probably some of you guys have a little experience of sales somewhere here and there right most of you guys come most of people in our business join as freshers within the industry right and now people feel that just because they have grown old in the in the you know in their life and probably they are 18 19 20 they've done their graduation right so they'll be able to go out and do everything at the first go now this is something that you need to understand being a new business it's an absolute new opportunity for yourself and if you want to learn any new skill any new trade like for the first time when you started learning the basics of a b c d what was the first thing that you did to yourself right it was not straight away you picked up your pen and write you know the letter a what did you do was well, the first thing was your mom or dad the first teachers of your life right put these three pointers and you decided and this probably a crooked a was your first thing now starting from this a to reach to this particular a right now this itself is a journey and the journey is called you know the, the process is called the learning process now everybody in you know on the globe i mean obviously all you guys have done your schooling you've done your graduation you've done your post graduation right all you guys started with the first thing you know in in class first or probably in class play group it was all about you know writing those a b c d and understanding the basics similarly in our business as well because you're going to start with something which is very very new you know it's absolute new trade to yourself i would recommend that you have to go through you know with the learning curve itself if you try doing it too quickly too fast then it will be not possible for you to able to you know or probably you'll be able to go out and do it and you'll you'll fail immediately and probably you'll quit as well because you're not able to do it right whenever you want to learn something new understand it is going to be a process and that is the process that i want you to, in, to get introduced to to it today being the first day of you in the business right now you know that you know in the induction program we already talked about you know that the business is we are a direct sales and direct marketing company very rarely if you ask me my did you know how to do a sale before joining the business i guess no you know i've done my engineering after completion of my engineering i you know got placed as well i was working with the company the job was business development i did the best of what i can but then when i entered into a new industry right that is direct sales industry i had to restart from the grassroots level right to understand everything and over a period of time it took me around about 12 15 months to understand each and every aspect of the business and probably the first few months i just invested to learn the art of selling now when we talk about learning as a process right it is as good as you know learning a new skill and there's so many skills that you that you can learn over a period of time because a lot of skills like for example swimming you know to a human body swimming is not something that you already know from your mother's womb swimming is a skill that you can learn over a period of time right wrong so in order to learn a new skill what do you need you need a coach to yourself you need somebody who already is good with you know the skill that you are willing to learn so if i want to go out and learn the art of swimming i would need a swimming coach similarly if i want to go out and probably learn driving right i would need a driving coach i want to learn cricket i would like to hire a cricket coach right if i want to become successful then i need to hire a success coach if i want to learn maths then i need the maths teacher or a maths coach similarly in our business if you want to learn sales that the base of any business not just our business any business you need to have a sales coach to yourself which we have already assigned you know which after your training program gets over you will be assigned with a coach who is going to help you you know at each and every level at each and every aspect of of the business and this coach's job is to ensure that whatever the things he learned when he was new you have to do the same mistakes and you have to learn the same art but will you be able to become as good as your coach or trainer straight away the answer is no so the best question that you get asked to to any of your seniors or subordinates anybody 
you know is what did you do when you were on your day one you know what were the challenges that you faced when you were on your first day what was the feeling and most of the time when you starting to learn anything which is new the feeling is always of being scared when i entered my school for the first time i was scared when i sat on my first car to learn how to drive i was scared there's a fear you understand the fear was probably of failing fear was probably i'll, I'll bang the car somewhere i might not succeed learning but guess what and and you know even the basic the most basic skill i would say the skill of walking you know walking also is a skill so if you learn how to walk do you understand how did you learn how to walk how did you learn how to drive how did you learn how to swim how do you learn how to write all these various skills that you possess already or probably are in the process of learning right it all can be learned but there has to be somebody who teaches and trains you do you understand and that is what we already have a trainer to you right who's going to help you coach you guide you mentor you at each and every level especially at level 1 because this is an absolute new industry for someone like do you understand it was a new industry 10 years back for me as well but then guess what i learned how to do it do you understand did it take time oh, obviously yes you know it took me so much of time to just understand the basics and obviously to grab the basic i mean you know when you first time wrote letter a it took you almost 5 to 6 years you know to start writing this letter a perfectly and now that you already uh, you know you already too good with this basic you can do it with closed eyes do you understand similarly with people for, for example i don't know how to swim but if you ask me just to and, and can i learn swimming the bigger question is can i learn swimming but just by reading the books or on swimming right 100% the answer is going to be no and the reason why you cannot learn the art of swimming or any xyz skill just by reading or, or attaining knowledge from youtube or instagram or, and i don't know what all you know wikipedia right you you can have definitely you can have knowledge but till the time you do not practice that skill that's the most important word that's called practice right till the time you do not practice that particular skill what's going to happen is you'll not be able to become confident you know in in uh, in in doing any particular skill that you're trying to learn so so that's something very very important for you to understand that you know sales as a business to you it's an absolutely new business will you be able to do it straight away the answer is no but is it impossible for you to learn how to sell no it's absolutely not everybody and anybody can learn because what we've done is we've divided the entire training program right into such small little you know fragments that each and every person just like you know how we learned a b c d till z and then we learned the formation of a word and from that word we started forming a sentence and that from that sentence we learned how to you know form a paragraph and then probably a story and then we started reading it and then we improved and today i'm standing in front of you you're sitting in front of me and probably you can uh, do the same thing what i can do as well but it was taught from the basic and the same basic in our business you know is something that i'm supposed to introduce it to you today so understand guys sales is, is it's not an art you understand it's not an art that only artists can do it only creative people can do it sales is more mechanical right sales is something that can be easily learned right it's more of a number game has nothing to do with emotions has nothing to do with your feelings has nothing to do with anything else but it's more of mechanics so that mechanics is something if in case you are able to understand i guess your job will be done quite easily right so let's get into the business of of sales straight away so if ever you want to think about you know getting into sales business so there are two things that that i'm going to talk about one is how you learn you know the art of doing a business and and getting good with the sales processes and then how do you just become good with the selling aspect of the business right so they're two very very different things now if you ever want to become i'm just going to raise this if you ever want to become really good with sales right and if you think sales uh, you know where does sales happen sales happens everywhere you know there's no particular place where a sales happens the you know sales can be done face to face sales can be done over calls sales can be done over presentations sales can be done 
you know, in, in different, you sitting in different countries, you can do it. And, and there's so many various ways of sales. But end of the day, what do you mean by sales? Is the transfer of enthusiasm from the seller to the buyer, right? But is it just the enthusiasm if you don't know anything about your product? Right answer is no. So there's a proper mechanics behind it. So if you ever want to get into any kind of sale, it can be a product, can be a service, can be a concept, you need to have an understanding of four basic things. The first is you need to have a sales pitch. A sales pitch, which I guess is very, very important. If you don't know a sales pitch, you don't know what you're supposed to say. You don't know how do you introduce yourself. You know, you don't know how to give a small short story about your product. You know, you don't know how to create a need of your own product, and you don't know how to uh, provide a solution, you know, of your own product to, to the customer, then he's never going to buy. Once you've given that short story, how about, you know, you're presenting, you present yourself to people, you know, letting your people know what exactly is, is your desire. Why are you there? And then putting across the clothes and then probably once a person gets close doing a rehash, right? So that's a proper structured pitch, which all your leaders and all your trainers are going to give it to you with the clients that you're going to work with. Can be any client. It can be a product, can be a service, can be a concept, doesn't matter, but you need to know a sales pitch, right? We also in our business call this as five steps to a sale, right? That's something very important. All you guys need to know the five steps to a sale. Point number two is called product knowledge. What do you mean by product knowledge, right? Product, product knowledge means knowing everything in detail about what you're about to sell. If I am selling this marker, I need to know from the history that where did marker originated, right? To the quality of plastic used in building this marker, right? To where the refill is going to come from. What is the cost of manufacturing? What is the profit percentage? Everything I need to know about this marker. Because if I don't know this, it is not that I have to tell it to somebody, right? It's not that I'm going to use the history of the marker to sell the marker, but this is something which gives you a lot of confidence that if in case, uh, you know, a customer walks into your store or you go out selling something to somebody, right? And if in case he ever asks you, you need to know each and everything. You should not come as, sir, I'll get back to you. You understand? You cannot come as that. Why? Because then, you might lose a sale, which I don't want. I'm sure even you don't want as well, right? You need to learn each and everything. Product knowledge, anything, you know, when we talk about product knowledge, so I just give an example of, uh, uh, you know, a marker. For example, you go to an uh, iPhone store, you know, an Apple store, and you want to buy an iPhone. Now, it's, it's quite simple. When a customer walks into uh, a store of Apple, he is a very layman. He's just going to walk in and ask you a couple of questions. He's going to ask you about, you know, uh, the price. What's the price? Uh, what's the discount? What are the accessories that I'm going to get? He might also talk about, uh, or probably ask about <clears throat> the memory. You know, what's the memory going to be like? And uh, the battery in max to max, probably the colors, you know, what are the various colors? That's how a layman asks. But no customer is going to ask you about whether it is, you know, an inductive touch or it's a capacitive touch. You understand? They're not going to ask you inside what, inside the setting, what's happening. You understand? They're not going to ask you anything. They're not going to ask you, but it is your responsibility to know each and every small little detail about, you know, where the phone was manufactured, where was it assembled. And I'm just giving you some random examples, right? Similarly in your product and what is the client that you're selling? It's very important for you to have the knowledge of the product, not because, not because the person is going to ask, but knowledge of the product gives you confidence of selling. So if ever you want to become confident, because you know, it's like you are preparing for exam, you're preparing for an examination. You need to have absolute knowledge. You cannot go out on the field and you cannot sit on calls 
Do you understand with half knowledge or just the sales pitch? Because that will never give you confidence. You need to have a knowledge of, you know, your product, what you're going to sell. Do you understand how, for example, if you're working with, you know, a charity or you're working with insurance, or you're working, you need to know where and how the money is used. You need to know that. And, and all this, I, I guess the five steps is just a summary of your product knowledge. Do you understand? The summary of the product knowledge is called five steps. And that's how we've designed right but then you need to know the detail we don't share product knowledge might last for two hours a pitch will last for two minutes you understand that's how small it is the third and very important thing is those frequently asked questions you know that whenever you're going to get ready for sales you need to be absolutely sure of what questions are going to come and believe me after being in the industry for two three days four days five days max a week you will come across with so many people because we're talking to people on day-to-day -day basis, right? Especially when sales, you're supposed to interact with a lot of customers, right? Face-to-face -face or probably over the calls as well. They're, they're going to ask you just questions. Do you understand? They're not, and questions, and obviously, if you know the product, if you have the knowledge of the product, you'll probably be able to answer these questions in a more effective manner. Do you understand? So that's the frequently asked questions. Now, you know, out of my observation and the experience in that industry, I can tell you something that if somebody is interested in buying your product, there's a very high chances that he is going to ask you certain questions related to the product. So for example, you just gave a pitch, right? You, you told, uh, you know, the customer about your product or the service that you're selling or the concept that you're selling. And he's asking questions related to the product. Right. He is not giving you any objections. He is not giving you negative that I don't want it. I'm not interested. Rather, for example, if I'm selling a marker, he starts asking me, so what's the cost? You know, what's the discount? How do I get this refilled? These are interested people questions. Do you understand? When somebody is interested, they're going to ask a very different question. The tone of asking these questions is going to be, you know, very, 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 very subtle. Now, what happens, you know, when a person is not interested? Right, that's the fourth thing that's called objection handling. What do you mean by objection handling? A lot of people, sales is a business of rejection. Sales is a business of rejection. You cannot, when you, when you get into sales, you just cannot expect, expect every time that you're going to pitch, the person is going to give you a check or he's going to sign up with you. That's not possible. Sales is a business of rejection. Probably out of 100 people that you're going to pitch, two to three people might buy from you. That's the amount of rejection that you're ready, you should be ready to handle, right? If you do not tell yourself that, listen, I'm only going to have those two, three positives, do you understand? Then you might probably lose your attitude very quickly. You might just, you know, feel like quitting. It's, and it is difficult, challenging, because constantly people are going to reject you. Constantly people are going to say, listen, I'm not interested, not interested. And it's absolutely okay, but what happens? right? You need to learn the art of turning around these objections, turning around the negative. Do you understand? There are certain set of negatives or objections related to every product, right? There can be no other negative or no other question out of syllabus. So you need to learn the art of objection handling that how do we rebuttal and how do we turn around a proper objection? So for example, again, I'll take the example of the same marker. If somebody is interested in buying a marker, he'll probably ask about the price. But if somebody is not interested in buying, he would be like, this is too costly. Or probably I will get it from nearby store. Why should I buy it from you? Do you understand? That's just consumer behavior. That sort of. So once you understand the difference between FAQs and <clears throat> objections, it becomes very easy for you as a salesperson to either you are supposed to answer and close or you're supposed to turn around and close, all right? And guess what? With practice and the compounded effect, compounded effect means you're not going to have the same experience and the same confidence, you know, that you have today, 10 years, 10 days down the line. It is obviously going to increase and it just keeps adding up, right? So initial day is going to be challenged because you know none of these, but what happens? after seven days? What happens after 15 days? What happens after a month? Do you think it is going to remain the same? 
The confidence is going to be the same. The answer is no. You know, you're just going to improve and improve and improve. And over a period of time, you see the certain trends that keep coming up. You know, the the objections start repeating. Do you understand the the FAQs, the questions start repeating. So probably initially you'll not be able to answer, but over a period of five, ten days, twelve days, fifteen days in the same industry, same business, you know now how to answer it. You know now how to you know uh, answer a question or probably turn around a negative spell. It just needs a bit of patience for you to learn the art of selling, guys. That's how. And we what we've done in the training program is we've actually divided this entire thing into a lot of small little fragments. and we're going to teach you each and every bit as to how you can become good at it but one thing that we would need from you is your time your dedication your commitment right and uh, obviously your practice because without you practicing we cannot learn right it's as good as you know your teacher gave you a class work she taught you in the school but then who's the who's the guy who actually came first in the class is not the guy who actually you know just went back and threw the bag was the guy who came first was the guy you know who actually went back home completed the homework prepared himself for the next day came back all prepared and that's exactly what we expect from people like you because you're too new in the business so that's the selling aspect of the business the second and the very important thing is understanding my business you know as as a business we operate on certain principles or or certain systems you know this they are also called the Uh, SOPs of an organization, the systematic operating procedures, and if in case you want to learn any skill, you want to go out and develop any skill, you need to obviously have uh, understanding of the systems. For example, if you want to learn how to drive a car, you know, and I'm sure a, a few of you guys might be knowing how to drive a car. Sorry, my drawing is not so good, right? But if I want to learn how to drive this car, what happens right i need to know i you have to understand you don't have to manufacture the car you understand we not expecting you to go out and develop you know a new engine or we not a research and development you know we don't want to get into this rather what we just want is how to learn the art of driving right when you are learning the art of driving that means you are sitting somewhere here on the driver's chair this is you when you want to learn the art of driving what are you going to do what what do you do so you basically first of all understand the systems that is the accelerator the brake the clutch and the gear of the of the business knowing and having the knowledge of these are called the systems of you know a car once you have the knowledge of the system that what i accelerator does what is the responsibility of a brake what does the clutch do and a gear do after that the next thing is you have to sit on the driver's chair and slowly start practicing you know on an open ground where you don't bang it to anybody do you understand and you also stay safe as well because it's going to happen slow right it is not going to happen suddenly you don't learn any skill suddenly it takes a little time accelerator brake these are the, these are the systems of the business right what or, or probably driving sorry right now what happens is if you want to learn uh, any any skills you you have to understand what are the systems involved get the knowledge of the systems sit inside and slowly start practicing these systems in synchronization you have to practice these systems this is a very important word that's called synchronization right you need to learn how accelerator when to apply an accelerator when to apply a brake right but you cannot do it just by sitting and reading you have to sit inside the car and you have to apply the gear and you have to apply the accelerator that's when you start learning how to do it but that's why you are important and why am i giving this example is because that's the same principle and the same scenario with when it comes to sales as well so when you look at our business you know it also has some principles that has also got you know certain systems and these systems are lifeless and when i say lifeless means it doesn't really matter who is going to apply the brake and who is going to apply the clutch or who applies the accelerator the car is supposed to move you understand they are lifeless but if you are as a driver don't know how to drive then you might crash the car and the same thing is applicable with our business as well 
so when you look at you know the business we've got four basic systems within the organization the first system is called the five steps that i already talked about right which is basically your introduction or the presentation aspect you know the pitch aspect the second is called the eight steps now eight steps basically deals with the mindset of an individual you know that it's it's very important for you to be positive so for example if by mistake you know you touch somewhere you crash the car once you probably fall down learning bicycle for the first time what did you do you did not give up on you know the bicycle you did not give up on learning the car what did you do you just picked the bicycle up rubbed yourself off you understand the dust you sat on the bicycle again and you started that is something that deals with the eight steps of the business right maintaining that attitude having that positive attitude having that learner's attitude having a goal set in mind what do you really want to achieve why are you doing this why are you here so all this will be trained to you in in you know during the training program that's called eight steps and this are eight steps to success nothing to do with fail but if you do not have the right mindset then you will not be able to succeed not just in my business any business any industry if you do not possess the right mindset then the chances of you succeeding very very less right the next thing is the next system rather is called law of average again it's a very like less system right law of averages is a system that is implemented across the globe when it's wherever there is a sale happening right it's it's in, in very simple terms it says that every no takes us closer to us yes? and the more number of times we practice the same thing the outcome starts appearing as a ratio you know for example if having uh, you know if if i want to probably go out and you know pick up four aces out of 54 playing cards or or a deck of cards do you understand i just need to keep picking up cards so what i i'll give you a very simple example so for example there there are 54 cards in a pack and and there are four aces i shuffle the pack of cards upside down laid in front of you and ask you to pick up four aces you'll not be able to pick up if the chances are only four but you'll 100% be able to pick up if the chances are 54 you just keep picking up cards one by one by one you don't know where the ace line it might be on the 47th number it might be on the 19th can be on the 17th can be the first can be on the last i don't care but eventually you will be able to have your four aces right if you are picking up cards one by one what does that mean that by repetition of the same task again and again you increase the chances of your success that's what law of averages right and in our business this is a very very important principle very important system and the last would be the last system is called tps that's called territory planning sheet when it comes to direct sales or face to face while in tele sales it will be D- dps that's called data planning sheet how well you are able to manage your database you and so if you do not there's so many people you know i i keep telling them that every person that you're calling to has to give you an answer either it has to be a yes or it has to be a no right a lot of times what people do is they skip they read the names they read the numbers right and they're like okay let me just leave now you never know law of averages imagine you're picking up your cards and you're leaving two three cards and picking up one two cards leaving two three cards picking up one two cards what are the chances that you'll be able to you know pick up all the four aces it you might just lose out in one or two that is the reason why using this system becomes very important rather using all the systems now that you have the knowledge of all these four systems understand what do we really want out of you or what do you want out of yourself is success right success in our business might sound as probably filling up three to four forms or three to four applications today signing up three to four customers today but that's something that's called the output you know that is the result aspect now obviously everybody you know who starts in a business or even if you're studying you're learning how to drive you want to become a good driver that's the reason that's the output right but what happens right is it the like how do you control the output you control the outputs by the right inputs what are you inputting into the system it is as good as a juicer machine that's also a system right the juicer machine is a system you put in the oranges you'll get the orange juice you put lemons you'll get lemon juice do you understand same way you keep changing the inputs and you'll keep changing the outputs with our business when it comes to direct sales or tail sales or marketing or whatever it is it's all a number game right this is already fixed you already know the pitch this is something that you develop over a period of time but these two things that law of averages 
and your data you need to control right and you know a lot of times you might have you know in science labs you might have done certain experiments when you just keep keep tweaking you know the the inputs and you keep seeing there's a change in the output and we keep tweak, tweaking the inputs till the time we do not get the desired outputs so for us if the desired outputs is three forms or three customers signed up in a day right we already have with you know lots and lots of people who practiced this these systems we have certain fixed numbers for example with with direct sales if you probably go out and see 100 to 120 people right you might land up filling up three applications same with tele sales or marketing if you go out and probably give dial 100 150 200 numbers you'll get the same and you know both are quite easily achievable and can be easily done now a lot of times people tell me you know i'm not able to sell it is not because of anything else it is not because you're not able to sell it's because the inputs that you're giving they're absolutely wrong and when the inputs going to be wrong you also know the output cannot be correct do you understand so this is the base of the business that's called these are the systems and once you understand the systems we're going to ask you to implement those systems. Your first week of training probably will be completely dedicated, you know, to understanding the business or understanding these principles and, you know, the system. All my corporate trainers, my business managers, the other owners, they're all going to come up, you know, in different, different sessions. They're going to talk about how, you know, you, you use these systems. But end of the day, guys, your selection and your performance in the business is not dependent on me. It's dependent on how good you are with giving the input, right? And the person who's going to succeed in my business is not the person who's the personality, is not the person who's got great communication skills, is not the person who has extraordinary vocational skills, is the person who's the hardest working guy who can basically hit these numbers because sales is absolutely a number game. It has nothing to do with who you are. On this note, guys, uh, thank you so much for being a very patient audience. And I'll be seeing you in the next session that will be starting up with, you know, the five steps of the pitching aspect of the business as well. Thank you so much.